In this video, I'm going to explain how to create this scorecard chart in Excel and when to use it. Now, your boss might request something crazy like, and the same thing goes for quarterly reports. They are unreadable. They're just numbers and boring and black. So what I was thinking is that maybe we should have some sort of graphic, like if we have a bad quarter, put in a storm cloud, and when we have a good quarter, fireworks. So I'm gonna explain how to customize it with emojis or even pictures of your boss. And if you're new to our channel, welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and we're here to help you improve your Excel skills so you can save time with your job and advance in your career. So let's get to it. Okay, so we'll first take a look at the basic scorecard chart. And when you would use this chart is when you're measuring any type of KPIs or goals. And in this case, it's at a very high level. So here on this scorecard, we're just seeing that for leads, we have incomplete data. For our appointments, we've passed there along with deliveries and support, but we failed with our sales goal. So again, very high level. We're not showing any details here, but this just quickly lets us know some areas we might need to focus on. So next we'll take a look at how to build the chart. And the first thing we're gonna look at is the setup of the source data. So here I have the source data and right down here we can put in the score. So here's the legend here. If it's a one, it's gonna be incomplete. Two will be a pass and three will be a fail. And so you just type in those numbers right here for each of these categories. Now, of course, this data could be linked to other formulas or other data where you're actually calculating these results. It's absolutely fine. But for this scenario, we're just inputting or typing in those numbers. And then up here, we're going to return a one if it is uh, this uh, score and a zero if not. So this is just using a simple if formula here to say that if L10, which is our actual score down here, equals the score over here in J6, then we're going to return a one. If not, we're going to return a zero. And that same formula is copied to all of the cells here. And we'll use this as a source of the chart. And I do have a tutorial on the if function. I'll put a link in the description below where you can check that out. So next we're gonna build out the chart. And the first thing we'll do is just select all of the data here, excluding the score column, go over to the insert tab, and we're going to choose a column chart, a clustered column chart here. And I'll just move that over the existing one. And the first thing we're gonna do is just clean this chart up a bit, a little bit. We're gonna remove some of the elements that we don't need. I'm gonna remove the grid lines, the legend, and I also don't need the uh, primary vertical axis labels here. So again, we'll just clean that up. Then I'm gonna right click any of the columns here and go format data series. And here I'm gonna set the gap width to zero and the series overlap to 100%. And that'll just fill in our columns. And next we need to insert icons. We're using icons here uh, for the icons. So we'll go up to the insert tab. Under illustrations, we're gonna choose icons. And then you can use any icons you'd like. I'm gonna scroll all the way over here to the signs and signs and symbols. And then we can find our check, X and the dash. Those are the ones I used and hit insert. That'll insert all of those icons or those shapes here on the sheet. And the next step is once we have them all there is to just format them. So I want this checkbox to be a green fill. So under graphics fill here, we can just choose any green you'd like. For the X, I want that to be red. And then for the dash, I want that to be a uh, light gray color. And to apply those to the chart, the first thing we'll do is just uh, copy the icon. You can right click copy, or I'm gonna hit Control C on the keyboard. Then we're going to select the incomplete column. Now our first uh, leads is incomplete. So we'll just, so just left click on any one of those bars. And then over here on the right side, you should see the format data series. If this is not open anymore, you can also right click format data series. We're gonna to go to the uh, fill and line, picture and texture, and we're gonna click clipboard. And that's just gonna paste in the icon. And then just repeat that for each of these. So control C here for appointments, we had a pass. So we'll just again, uh, left click, I'm sorry, right click format or left click that, picture, texture, clipboard. And then same thing here for the final one. Oops, we'll copy first, then click this, then go over here and again, clipboard. And now we have all of our icons essentially pasted in or they are filling the bars instead of the colors in the chart. And then finally, we just need to resize. As you can see, we kind of have some egg shapes here. So if we just resize the chart 
and uh, make it uh, shorter instead of taller, that will move these back towards circles. And you can kind of continue to do that to figure out where it looks like a circle. You can also hover the original icon or move it over uh, the chart to kind of get it to the same size and shape. You might need to also make the chart wider or smaller, just depending on, or wider or narrower, I should say, depending on where you're trying to fit it into your sheet or dashboard. Now, if the boss asks for something a little more exciting than check marks and icons, you can also use emojis. And that's what I've done here to create our uh, storm cloud and fireworks report, with a, along with the poop emoji. <laughs> To do this one, we're gonna to go to the Insert tab, and under Illustrations and Shapes, we're gonna choose a text box. And we'll just draw that anywhere on the sheet, kind of make it a uh, square. And now we're going to insert an emoji. And on Windows, you can hold down the Windows key and press period, and that will bring up the emoji uh, menu here where you can choose from emoji. So maybe we want a different firework. I'm just gonna start typing firework in the search. And maybe we'll do this one instead, the sparkler. That's kind of cool. So we'll put that there in our text box. And then we'll also make the text bigger. I'm gonna make it about a size 32, so it looks a little bigger. And then we wanna resize the text box around it because essentially what we're gonna do here is copy this. We're gonna copy this square. Oh, and before we do that, the other thing I'm gonna do is change the border here. It's currently a gray border. I'm gonna go up to shape format here. Under outline, we'll just do no outline. And now we don't have an outline on this. Again, we're gonna select around this. I'm gonna hit Control C on the keyboard to copy it. We'll go into our chart. You can use an existing chart or if you're creating a new one, it'll be the same steps here. Just right click format the series that you wanna fill this with. We'll go over here and again hit clipboard and that's going to paste in the emoji to the chart. And then you just repeat that process of inserting the text box or you can make a copy of this, hit Control C, Control V or uh, right click, drag, hold and control, and uh, just change the text in here. Again, change the emoji, windows period, change the emoji you want, and then paste it into the chart. If you really wanna spice things up here, you can also use images. Here I have pictures of myself, but of course this could be of your boss or the project manager, or just make it fun. Uh, for this, what we're gonna do is go to the insert tab, under illustrations, we're gonna to go to pictures and then place oversells in this device. You might not see all these options on your version of Windows, but essentially you want to, I'm sorry, your version of Excel, but essentially you wanna insert a picture here. I'm going to insert this one. And then we just, of course, need to resize it a bit. You actually don't need to resize it, but I'm just gonna resize it. I have the other ones down here, so I'll just kind of make it the same size as the rest of those images. And it's the same process. I'm gonna hit Control C or right click copy. Maybe we wanna replace this one here. So we're gonna right click format that, go up here, and then we'll just choose clipboard and that will paste in the image. And now we have some various images here to uh, give our project status a little more excitement. And one important thing to note is these charts are fully dynamic. So as the data changes, the images or emojis or icons will also change. If we just change our status here to a one, you can see that the uh, image here also changes to what we set, the, the picture that we set for that series in the chart. And then one other quick formatting tip, if you notice there's some white space between the title and the icons here, we can go into our primary vertical axis and turn that on, and then we'll right click it, format, and over here, we're gonna change the maximum bound to one because in our source data, the uh, number is never going to be greater than one. Then we can resize the chart. You'll notice that gap is a little smaller there. We can go and resize the chart. And then we can also go back and turn the uh, primary vertical axis off. And that'll just clean it up and give it a nice look. So I hope that helps. Now I'd love to know what you're going to use this chart for. So leave a comment below and let us know. And this chart is from a series on eight different types of progress charts that I did. I'll link up other videos in that series in the description below as well. If you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.